So today we got some interesting data mining content from the Taiwan server. We got two new sets of bows and arrows and two brand new staves that we'll be going over today. So fair warning, this is a little bit different from what videos I'm used to doing. Uh, I usually script a lot of my videos, but this time it's sort of scripted, sort of not scripted. I just have a bunch of slides showing. So uh, <laughs> uh, this is going to be me talking for a while. So I hope you guys don't mind that. So uh, let's get on with it. So for context, in April earlier, or in March earlier this year, sorry, um, Taiwan or the Taiwan server released a little, a little um, letter to the players saying like, "Hey, this is our roadmap. This here's what we're gonna do." So on, would you see under in uh, the four, which is April, they're adding two, or they're adding two new sets of weapons. They're adding uh, new bows and new stabs. These are obtained in tech missions. So uh, we didn't know what they were until today when people data mined the latest Taiwan patch and found two new sets of bows, two new, st uh, two new stabs, all with cool new abilities and stuff. So let's just jump right into it. We're going to start with bows because I'm an elf. No, I'm just kidding. It's because it, it was first in the list that was given to me. So for bows, we have the Shattered Tactical Bow. This is the first bow that we're going to go over. So it is a bow that has Magnum Shot Enhancement, Critical Damage Increased, Decreased Durability Loss, has Piercing. It's got all that good stuff that... Oh. It has a lot more stuff than that, really. It's got crash shot fragment damage and crash shot fragment range and magma shot damage all on the bow itself. So this is actually pretty significant. Um, for those of you that don't know, magma shot damage reforge, just a reforge by itself, each level gives 10% extra magma shot damage. So this bow alone gives you five reforged levels of magma shot damage, which is pretty, pretty big. Right, people love to go for the magnum shot accessories, which uh, total, well, you have three and three on each accessory, you get sixty percent. So, having a, basically an additional two accessories by just equipping this bow is pretty strong. Um, for the crash, crash shot fragment damage reforge, uh, it's three point five percent per level. So, <laughs> this bow alone gives you about forty three levels of crash shot fragment damage, which is also insane. That that's a lot of damage that the this bow just adds to crash shot. This would probably make crash shot very viable. Um, it also gives about ten levels of crash shot fragment distance too, but just equipping it. Wow, what a good bow! Um, for the set effects, it gives magnum shot enhancement, which doesn't seem that big because you think, hey, we already had that on Bohemian. But think about it a little bit more. That means you can. Re that means elves can finally replace Bohemian wear. And wear light armor instead. So the more tactic, the more like practical armor set will probably be Ultimate Gios on Circlet and Ultimate Gios uh, Devastation. Or sorry, Ult Gios Devastation on Circlet, uh, sorry, on Hat. Ult Gios Devastation armor, then Fleet Feet and uh, Forest Ranger gloves. Well, that would probably be the most optimal um, way to go forward. It also has a fifteen percent accuracy increase too. Basically, what that means is each shot you shoot, uh, the game will automatically apply 15% accuracy to it. So you start at 15% accurate aiming, which is also amazing. This lets you miss a lot less. People love those other arrows, even or like the ones from Magmel. I don't remember what those are called, but uh, when those got nerfed, those got actually nerfed in KR. So hopefully these bows don't get nerfed in, and when they come to NA or when they finish coming out in Taiwan. Oops, sorry about that. Um, anyways, moving on from that, uh, it also comes with a special arrow similar to the Baffle Huntress. This arrow gives 20% damage bonus. Uh, Baffle Huntress is 15% for those that aren't aware. It also gives 35 max damage and 20 minimum damage, and it also completes the set effect for the bow. So if you combine them together, you get these stats, you get over 100 um, max damage at the ceiling. You get an extra 100 range from upgrades. You have two piercing. You have magnum shot damage. You have accuracy of damage bonus. You have a lot of stuff. 
I've, I forgot to mention this the note earlier, but we don't know if the crash shot damage and the magnum shot damage uh, effects are additive or multiplicative. But even if it's just additive, that's very that's a lot of damage added on to a crash shot and magnum shot. So either way, uh, I think elves would be very happy with these bows. Uh, increased critical damage. If it follows, the thing about that one is if it follows CRKs, Celtic Royal Knight Swords, um, we would get a, an additional three upgrade red upgrade levels because it would get thirty percent extra crit damage. I don't think it will follow um, Celtic Royal Knight Swords, and I don't think it will be thirty percent extra crit damage. But if it is, that's also insane. That means you basically have a step ten bow if you. Uh, Upgrade this to step seven and uh, have the crit damage effect on. So let's just compare this to the Baffle Hunter and Huntress real quick. <laughs> <clears throat> so the Baffle Hunter and Huntress were the, was the last released best in slot bow, which was released back in 2013. That's over eight years ago. Wow, we haven't got a new boat in over eight years. <laughs> that's in, that's insane. So. Um, there's a lot of missing additional effects here. You're missing a lot of damage. You're missing like a ton of durability. You're missing all the set effects. You have to wear Bohemian if you wanted your maximum damage. You're missing 100 range. You're missing a. This new boat gives a lot of things compared to the Battle Hunter and Huntress, and it's definitely worth the upgrade. However, we're not even done yet because there's also a, another set of or another uh, bow set to talk about. This is the Bow of Final Destruction. This is a bow that has starts with two piercing and gets another piercing when you upgrade it, which goes with the three. That's one more than Mathful Hunter. It has 250% crash shot fragment damage, 250 range, and 100% magnum shot damage. It's got slightly more max. This bow, it's got, um, it even has a 30% accuracy increase. Which, this bow is absolutely bonkers for anyone who's playing, uh, with with the high ping and with low ping like this this bow would make people actually think about switching to archery so if you combine it with the other arrow which gives a 25 percent damage bonus it gets 40 max and it gives the rest of the set effects you get a 118 max damage bow uh at the ceiling of course you roll well on crafting you have 200 extra range over the Baffle Hunter. You've got the set effects, you've got the piercing, you've got the crash shot fragment damage, fragment range, magnet shot damage, accuracy, 10% extra damage over the Baffle Hunter and Huntress. This bow is absolutely crazy too. So let's compare, so to bring it back, let's compare the bows together. So the Shatter Tactical bow, uh, I forgot to mention this. So uh, let me scroll back. So the Shatter Tactical bow and uh, Shatter Tactics are essentially the Revenant tier of bows. It's not the best, but it's uh, presumably slightly easier to farm compared to the other tier, which is the quote-unquote Perseus level of bow. I don't think it will use. Per it shouldn't use Kraken Hearts or anything like that. They all use brand new materials, and they're all dropped from tech missions like Seven Nightmares, Rod Delusion, and Feth Fiata. So. Um, yeah, we gotta get farming on that one once this patch comes out, if it ever comes out to NA. But uh, anyways, so we're gonna go back to the differences. So over the Baffle Hunter, you have 50% extra magnum shot damage, 5% max damage at the ceiling, aka if you roll really well on the bow, the 5% extra bonus damage, which assuming that you have the same exact max damage, like if you have 1000 max damage on the bow with both bows, the Shatter Tactical Bow would instantly give you 50 extra max damage over the baffle hunter that's <laughs> that's huge that's ginormous you also have uh 43 extra levels of crash shot fragment damage um 10 about 10 levels of distance of crash shot fragment range uh you have extra effective range so you aim faster and you have accuracy this bow is absolutely nuts compared to the Baffle Hunter. But then you, it goes even better. It, <laughs> so the bow of final destruction has 50% extra max, uh, maximum shot damage over the Shatter Tactical Bow, has 17% or 17 extra max damage at the ceiling, 5% extra bonus damage, more fragment damage, more range, one extra piercing, more range or more effective range, and 15% uh, extra accuracy over the Shatter Tactical Bow. 
then to bring it home compared to the Battle Hunter, which is the last best in slot bow you could have at this moment, um, you get 100 extra magnum shot damage, which is 10 levels of reforge of um, the magnum shot damage reforge, 22 extra max damage, 10% bonus damage, which if you had a thousand, if both if you equip both bows and had a thousand max damage with each, the bow of final destruction will give you 100 extra max damage over the Battle Hunter. Um, you have 250 Crash Shot Fragment damage, which is 72 levels of Crash Shot Fragment damage reforge. <laughs> you have um, 250 extra Crash Shot Fragment range, which is 17 levels of distance, 1 extra piercing, 2 extra effective range, and 30% accuracy, so you miss a lot less. So, if you're asking me what I think about this boat, I am an elf. I would, uh, I actually was not an elf by choice. But so just so you guys know, uh, I wanted I just picked an elf because it was there. Um, I probably would have been human if I wasn't otherwise. But the point is that I basically want to go for the best in slot gear because I think it's fun going for the best in slot gear, and I think this boat has the potential to be a contender to Perseus Knuckles at max everything, depending on your ping. Like, if you live close to the servers, I think this bow is very comparable to uh, Perseus Knuckles. If you don't live close to the servers, it's still a really good bow. I don't think you can out-damage Perseus Knuckles, especially since Perseus Knuckles can abuse, like, time shift and stuff like that. But this is a very good direction for new equipment coming into, uh, or new equipment for bows and arrows, or for archery in general. Art, like, again, like I said... Archery hasn't gotten new equipment in over eight years, so I know some people have really don't like really don't like this method where they just create new gear with new effects and stuff to quote unquote fix the talent. But I think that the bows were over were way overdue an upgraded weapon at some point. Uh, so yeah, I I think this is a very good bow, very good step in the right direction. But I know most of you really care about the stabs. <laughs> Magic is one of the most popular talents in the game. So, yeah, let's go on to the stabs. We first start with the Broken Luminous Staff, which is a staff that looks relatively innocent at first. But then you look at additional effects and it has two seconds, uh, a two second cooldown reduction on Lightning Rod, 250 second cooldown reduction on Meteor Strike. It's got piercing from upgrades, which unprecedented we have never have it we have never had a piercing in on a innate piercing on a magic weapon for oh sorry that was my navi firing off right there um but we also have 20 percent elemental damage which is also unprecedented we have never had that before i think maybe we have i'm not too sure but it also has hailstorm enhancement lightning rod enhancement and meteor strike enhancement so these side effects get 15% extra hailstorm damage, one second uh, reduction uh, charge time on lightning rod, which means uh, it would only take one second to fully charge lightning rod instead of two, and meter strike enhancement plus, uh, will give you meter strike damage plus 30%. So in total, if you upgrade this to the max, you get one extra piercing, two uh, lightning uh, cooldown rod, lightning, rod, or lightning rod reduction. Uh, <laughs> 250 seconds reduction on Meteor Strike, 17 to 26 uh, magic attack, elemental damage, and the same mana usage as you have with Celtic uh, Druid stuff, which was the last best in slot staff before this. Then you have the Hailstorm damage increase, uh, Lightning Red Max charge decrease, and Meteor Strike damage. So, right off the bat, I think that the Lightning Rod buff on this staff in particular is good. I don't think that this staff alone will make Lightning Rod really good because uh, if you have uh, the cooldown on this, you will go down to 13 seconds and then you have the Echo Stone, which uh, reduces uh, 4 seconds at level 10, which is max level. Sorry. You go down to 9 seconds, which don't I don't think that's enough to make Lightning Rod viable. I think Lightning Rod is by far the best skill in the, in the Magic's talent, but it's limited by its long charge time and its cooldown. So this is a step in the right direction. Not every nine seconds you could fire, or every, about every ten seconds you could fire off a fully charged Lightning Rod, deal a bunch of damage, 
with the Equestone, of course. Um, and, but I, I think this is a step in the right direction. It's got a lot of extra damage onto it. I think Hellstorm will finally break 100k without a combo card <laughs> if you use this. And yeah, good staff. Especially when you compare it to the Celtic Druid staff, which is kind of lame. Ooh, typo. I put down Baffle Hunter and Huntress. I've got to fix that later. Too bad. Oh well. Um, but it was, this staff was released back in 2015 with the renovation update, which was over six years ago. This is a very long time coming. Staffs deserve the new weapon uh, for a while. So, yeah. But then again, we're not done yet. That was the Revenant tier staff. Now we're onto the Perseus tier staff. So the Perseus tier staff actually starts off with piercing. So it will, and it gets another point of piercing from upgrades. So it will have two piercing when you fully upgrade it. It will also, it also gets uh, an additional 15% elemental damage compared to the Revenant staff, the quote unquote Revenant staff. <laughs> um, it has an additional 150 second cooldown reduction on Meteor Strike, an additional three seconds of uh, cooldown on Lightning Rod, an additional 10% uh, extra uh, mana cost decrease, and the same set effects and a little bit more uh, magic attack and everything. So I think that this staff will make magic OP. Not OP, but like really good in the contender for late game content. Um, and partic particularly in solo content because it still knocks around a lot of things. Unless you one shot literally everything, which I don't I don't know if that's possible. I think it's possible now with this staff because two piercing and hailstorm enhancement will let you spam hailstorm and do a lot of damage. But the main thing I'm actually really excited for is the lightning round cooldown. So as I mentioned earlier, the other light, or the other staff brought your cooldown da, down to nine seconds, and this staff will bring your cooldown down to six seconds with the Echo Stone. So that means you could fire off a fully charged lightning rod every about every seven seconds because you have to fully charge it first, right, for one second. So. That's a lot. Lightning Rod does so much damage, but it was just gated by the stupid long cooldown of 15 seconds and the, uh, the charge time of 2 seconds. So you basically will get killed before you uh, can fire it off and kill things. But down to 6 seconds for Lightning Rod? Wow. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Wow. The Meteor Strike cooldown is cute, but it's whatever. Elemental damage. I don't know. I really know how elements of damage works, but if it's just like a flat thirty-five percent increase of da all damage you do, this the staff is really good. This staff will make a lot of magic users very happy. Um, I I'm just I'm just shocked that we actually got <laughs> that uh, staffs are actually getting something. I thought I honestly thought that alchemy would get a buff before magic because alchemy is not very popular with new players. But I, I think that end, a lot of people want to get to endgame with magic. And I guess Alchemy already has an endgame equipment in the form of Revenant Cylinders. So this is Stav's and, or this is the staff's first actual endgame weapon, which is very good. I like the staff a lot. So it's compared to the Celtic Druid staff. Um, the, broken, the Revenant, the quote-unquote Revenant tier staff has plus one piercing, Plus 20% elemental damage, less lightning rod cooldown, less meteor strike cooldown, increased hailstorm damage, increased meteor strike damage, and less lightning rod charge time. All of that, except for <laughs> meteor strike damage, I guess. The meteor strike is uh, very relevant. The Celtic Druids have actually does have a little extra magic attack at the ceiling, but I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it to go for the Celtic Druid staff over the Broken Luminous staff if you have the choice, because... Wow, that Broken Luminous staff has one pier uh, extra piercing, the extra elemental damage. You'll easily out damage the Druid staff by not, like, you don't have to try at all. Then you have the Shattered Overload staff. Wow, that's a cool translation name. But you have an extra piercing over the Luminous staff. You have 15% extra elemental damage. Less Lightning Rod cooldown, like, significantly less. So, significantly less uh, Meteor Strike cooldown, a little bit extra magic attack, uh, and a little bit less mana usage. So if you compare that to the Celtic Druid staff, you have two extra piercing, which is unheard of, it's unprecedented, we had never had piercing on a magic weapon before, and it does, and it thinks, or sorry, 
piercing works with magic weapons the way you think it should. Like it will like it will uh, reduce their targets, uh, magic defense and magic protection. So it will ignore that much. So yeah, that's that's pretty huge. Thirty five extra uh, percent extra elemental damage, which is also a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Less meter strike cooldown, obviously. Less lightning strike, lightning rod cooldown. Six second lightning rods incoming. Oh my god, <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. I just want to spam lightning rod everywhere, like in Kraken. On the legs, you just spam lightning rod, like or you press lightning rod, you charge it up to max, then you uh, charge up like thunder real quick to like st stun lock the things around it, or like I don't know, fireball, I guess. But it just sounds like a very fun time, just spamming lightning rod everywhere. Um, Extra Hailstorm damage. Everyone, Hailstorm is really popular now with the Ego update. 15% extra damage. I think that's multiplicative because it's a set effect. That's very, very good. Meteor Strike damage increase. That's whatever. <laughs> Light A Rod charge time decrease. That's also, like I said, it's very good. I think this, I think this staff will let players do content end game. With like solo content and game with just a staff, I think it's that good. Magic has not been a good talent before compared to the other talents, but I think that this staff will push Magic over the edge. Mabinogi fired off again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, Magic after this update will be a <laughs> less of a meme talent than it was before for in in uh, in terms of end game content. So finally, we're going to go over the materials needed to craft each item. Uh, the bottom, like most of the, like the bottom items of these, uh, of these materialists, you probably know of, like salvation bow, intaxilian, mitho plate, finest firewood, whatever, arrow. You already knew that. But there are a few new tiers of uh, materials that come. Uh, you can need to get to craft these. So like magic mist crystal, shattered door wreck, slab with evil eyes. Uh, burning spark essence, ominous ore, abyss and great crystal ball. So these are what they look like: magic mist crystal and abyss engraved crystal ball. I'm going to assume comes from both or uh, feth advanced and normal, and feth elite respectively. Saw so with evil eyes. I think I'm thinking seven nightmares, or it could be revived illusion too. But like the rest of these are like. I think the ones on the left will come from like advanced and normal and or maybe like I, I don't know for too I don't know for sure. Maybe they only dropped an elite, but like something like that. And then the right one is obviously the, the quote unquote Perseus tier. I don't think they'll make these very hard to farm because if you check the look at the previous slide, you need several of these items to come in uh make your weapon make your like your new gear so i don't think it's gonna be too rare compared to like cracking hearts and stuff like that i hope not because <laughs> i really want to try out these weapons and i really want to see how they work out and i really just want to have more gear to work on because i think working in gear is fun but uh anyways uh let me know what you guys think in the comments uh, there in the comments we also I also put I'm also gonna put down the spreadsheet that I put on Reddit, so you guys can take a look at it yourselves and use compare comparisons yourselves. But other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm sorry that this was less of a uh, <laughs> less of um, a constructed video that you guys are used to, but I just wanted to go over my thoughts. I just want to talk about this. I'll, I love Mabinogi, I love new weapons, I love new gear, and let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to get these new weapons when they come out? Do you think these weapons are worth it? Do you guys think these weapons are coming in the right direction? And yeah, by the way, I should mention that this update is different from the talent revamp update, which is coming in May 2021 in Korea this year. I said 2021, but these weapons are while they do fix some problems of archery and magic players might be 
little disappointed that hey, they didn't. They only just added new weapons for Endgame. So before we jump and to any conclusions, I just want to say that there will there hopefully will be new talent revamps to all to basically all and like lesser used talents or like more awkward talents coming in the in the next month. So uh, we should look forward to that first before we jump to any conclusions saying like, oh, Nexon only cares about endgame gear. But yeah. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.